hi everybody. So I have to mix up some paint for myself here in my shop uh, for making latex masks. And I thought since I was doing it, I might as well um, do a video to add to my YouTube channel stock. One of the things I wanted to do is do a lot more little videos that were shorter and just showed like one quick thing. Because you know, that's what people look for. They search for like, how do you make latex paint? And I have painting a latex mask and I talk about it in there, but this is just one short little video. It's three parts. This is from Home Depot, the cheapest indoor flat interior flat paint that there is. This is where all of your color comes from. I need black right now, so I'm mixing up black. I have three cups that are the same size. Uh, they're all, you know, just plastic cups from a stack. And this is casting latex. It's the same latex that you make your masks out of. It's mask making latex, casting latex, mask latex. It's that. Uh, it is not super thick. It's probably depending upon where you get it from, in between milk and buttermilk uh, in consistency. All right, and cha-cha-cha-cha. I also have distilled water. So it is one-third casting latex, one-third black interior latex house paint, one-third distilled water. It being distilled water is important because in tap water, there are little minerals floating around. And those little minerals will, the latex will grab onto that and become solid, and that causes clogging and clumping. I have latex mask paint that I've had over there for three years, and it's not clumped up because I used distilled water. If I used tap water, it clumps up, and that happens actually pretty fast. It's like an oyster, how they make pearls, if there's one little grain of sand in there, the oyster you know, puts these layers over top of it, it does the same thing. If there's one little bit of rock in your water, and that's what you know, those little minerals are, then just like the rock wicks the moisture out of it, well, that causes your latex to harden up, and that's how you get clots. I mean, you consider how hot it gets in Texas. All right, so I have latex, boom, here's paint. This might be a little bit of a mess. I did stir this up really well because I bought it about a month ago in order to make more paint and I didn't do it. Now Rob has made me a batch of paint recently and I'm going to mix them all together uh, just so that they're all the same mix and there's no mysteries. And you know, you do a little bit of more one or the other. If you use thicker latex at the time when you make it, then, uh, you know, then there's less latex in it doesn't really matter that much. All right, out of the way. But you want this to and I'm gonna mix it. I'm gonna get a coffee container to mix it in. Da, 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 da. Rob is working away too. Say hi, Rob. Hey guys. Oh, oh, oh. We're finally breathing. Hands are on the AC's over. Yeah, no kidding. We were on a real big push. <laughs> So these coffee containers, I have people save them for me. I love them. Easiest way to get a clean air compressor. If the paint smells like coffee, it's a bonus. Okay, mm, back over here. Yeah, it smells good too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you shoot coffee out into the air, it smells awesome. So I used to clean my airbrushes sometimes with Dr. Pepper because I don't like to drink Dr. Pepper and I used to get it for free and it was an acid. So it'll clean the latex paint out of your airbrush. But when you spray it in the air and aerosol it, it smells amazing. All right, so I have this guy, an empty bucket. Uh, now, I probably should have put the water in first. It doesn't make a big difference. Uh, the only reason why I say that is if you pour latex into this, it's going to stick to the sides. Whereas if you pour it into water, it starts dissolving right away. But I'm just, I did one third, one third, one third. Now, do you have to use, you know, three different cups? No. But I do that every time that I mix it, 
because then I can see one third, one third, one third, and I get a hole, and I just toss them because they're super cheap. And if they're not cheap, you're buying them at the wrong place. All right, so now what I have here is this lovely blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to put the lid on it, and I'm going to, well, let me stir it a little bit first, and then I'll shake it up. And as I mix it, it gets getting more gray and more gray. Now, it's not going to look super black when, it's just not going to look super black. Because almost all paint, as it cures, as it dries, it, um, as it cures or dries, then it, uh, you know, it changes. Um, it gets darker. Most paints go darker. If you, if you look at a red latex paint, it looks pink. You put it on, you let it dry, it becomes the red that you're looking for. This is the red that you're looking for. My favorite mixing technique is the angry snail. This is far too big to do an angry snail. But I now have... Well, you can see the color right there. That's the black. And that's going to dry very black. I have this, which was mixed up previously. It's the same kind of mix, but uh, just a little bit browner. It might have a touch of acrylic in this one, and that's okay. Because in latex house paint is actually not latex either. It's also acrylic. And I kind of want to clean this container out a little bit. I'm going to do that by just mixing them back and forth. Uh, I base almost all of my stuff in black. So I mix up big batches of flesh tone and black. Everything else I just mix up in a bottle that's about this size. So I have black. That is pretty well mixed. But I want to do one more thing. I want to strain it as I put it into this bottle. You know, you put it in there like that, and now this will filter it so that we're in the house paint if you use old house paint. Because I know how you haunters are. Um, you can just filter those clumps out. And that, yeah, very few clumps. Perfect. Okay. Now this lid can go on. That is set and ready. I have another one of these guys here to fill up. I don't want to forget about filtering. If I forget to filter it, all I have to do is pour it back out and pour it back in, you know. All right, so that's that. Now that is if I'm going to run it through an airbrush like a Pache H or a VL or a Talon or anything like that, then I'm going to want to maybe add a little bit of water to it to thin it a little bit more. But it doesn't have, it's not super viscous. So there you go. But that was it. This is really a, just a short video that I wanted to do. I might be on later. I got a lot of crazy things going on. but. Uh, that's it. I made up some latex mask paint for painting a latex mask. It is that simple. House paint from Depot, one-third casting latex, the same stuff you make masks with, and one-third distilled water. So see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Go make stuff. Now here's the awkward moment where I can't end these. Like Facebook, like ding, go make stuff, ding, gone. But no. So now... You just do a video on homemade liquid latex. You can't make your own latex. You get a rubber tree. You got to grow the rubber tree. It's sap. Go make stuff. Don't try and make latex. Just buy that stuff. It's better.